Where are we? <laughs> are you surprised? This is the house for me and my husband. What? I was completely surprised. To be honest, the house was too luxurious that it didn't suit my in-laws. Well, my in-laws are free to define their own happiness however they want, so I can't really say anything about it. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you two get to enjoy life like this. Yes, I'm really happy. Now then, Sasha, let's get down to business. I'm counting on you to pay the loan. Huh? What on earth are you talking about? Because you're paid well, right? Then you can at least pay the loan, right? There's no way I'm going to pay that. Why not? If you thought of us, you would pay it, wouldn't you? No, I'm sorry, but this doesn't make any sense at all. How much is the loan anyways? It's a 15-year loan, $2,000 per month. Excuse me? That's even more impossible. This is just unacceptable. What in the world are my parents-in-law thinking? It is unbelievable of them to try to collect that much money from me. My name is Sasha. I'm 30 years old and I work at an international company. When I was a student, I studied hard and was able to go to a prestigious, well-known university. And because of that, I was blessed with a job and was able to work for a major foreign-affiliated company. After that, I spent very busy days at work. My work-centered life seemed to suit me very well and I worked hard and achieved results. Although I was leading a fulfilling life in this way, it was also true that I was feeling somewhat lonely. That is when I met Paul, who later became my husband. My encounter with Paul was a little unusual. We met in an elevator in an office building. I was just on my way to the floor where my client's company was located. Then trouble happened, and the elevator stopped. It was me and Paul who were trapped alone in the elevator. I had never experienced anything like this before, so I panicked. A lot. I talked to the button on the elevator to call the rescue team, and they said it would take 30 minutes for them to arrive. Oh, what should I do? I'll be late for my meeting. There's no signal, so I can't call them. Paul, who was in the elevator with me, laughed as I mumbled to this. No, I'm sure you'll be fine. Because if you're heading to the office in this building, everyone must know that the elevator stopped, and no one would blame you for being late because of being stuck in the elevator. Y you're right. I am the type of person who doesn't feel comfortable unless everything is perfect, and I have a strong feeling that I should not be rude to others. That's why I was surprisingly weak in situations like this. Paul calmly assessed the situation and calmed me down a little. But my anxiety and worry did not completely disappear. Then, perhaps seeing my state of mind, Paul suddenly started talking to me like this. Do you believe in fortune telling? What? Why are you asking me this all of a sudden? Fortune telling? For example, if today's fortune was bad and the situation is like now, do you think that the fortune telling was right? Well, uh, I guess so. Then, when your fortune is good and something good happens to you, for example, you get a promotion or a business deal, do you think it is because your fortune was good? No, I don't think so. I think it is the result of my effort and hard work. That's right. So in the end, things depend on how you look at them. You can see a situation like this as the worst thing you've ever experienced in your life, or you can think of it as a rare experience. So there is no point panicking in situations like this. It is important to decide for yourself what kind of feelings you want to have about the events that happen as they flow by. I listened to Paul's words, and it went right to my heart. I may have the tendency to see everything in a bad and negative light, but I think it's not easy to stay positive in a situation like this. Then, what about you? Are you enjoying this situation? No, not at all. Actually, I'm depressed and disappointed. Huh? I'm supposed to go to a business meeting today that decides the company's future, but it's in an office in a different building. But my stomach hurt and I remember that the restrooms in this office building on the way here are clean. I don't like dirty toilets, you know. The first floor restroom was being cleaned and I couldn't use it, so I jumped on the elevator when it came. I pushed the button for the fifth floor, but it stopped, and that's how I ended up 
where I am now. My business meeting time has already passed, my stomach is aching, and I'm in the biggest pinch of my life. Come to think of it, I was at the bottom of the fortune-telling list today. Maybe that's why. He said it so naturally that I couldn't help but laugh. You're in a much more difficult situation than I am, aren't you? And yet, you said what you said just now. Because you looked quite upset. That's true. I was wondering why you were so relaxed. Well, I'm glad that you were able to relax, even for a bit. Now is the time for you to exercise your positive thinking, isn't it? No. If I do that and relax myself, my stomach would probably get relaxed too, and that would be a bad thing. I laughed out loud. I had always pushed myself to work, 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 so someone like him was very new to me. Soon after, the rescue team arrived. Um, thank you very much. Thanks to you, I didn't panic. No, no, but I can't take it anymore, so can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> Please do so. I'm sorry for holding you back. Paul then ran to the restroom. This was how I first met him. The second time came much sooner than I thought. It was when I was walking around town after work. I spotted a man selling paintings on the street. I was looking at the paintings lined up, thinking that they were unique but somehow fascinating. If there are some other sceneries or anything you would like to see, I'll paint them for you. A man sitting cross-legged in front of me says so, and I looked at him. Uh, oh, you're... Huh? Did we meet somewhere already before? See, about two weeks ago, we were trapped together in an elevator. Oh, you're from that time. What are you doing here? No, no, no. That's my line. I was surprised to see you selling your paintings on the street. Do you do this kind of activity as a hobby? Oh, no. I got fired from my last company. What? In my case, I went into a building that I shouldn't have gone to use the restroom, so there was no excuse for what I did. So now you sell paintings? Yes, I do. I thought it's best to do what I've always wanted to do. I thought it was a good opportunity to do that. And are you making any money? Not at all. But that's how it is at first. But I don't want to be recognized as an artist after I die, though. I was once again attracted by his unconcerned attitude. At the time, I had just made a mistake at work and was feeling down. Then, please give me this $30 painting. What? Really? Thank you very much. It was so cute to see Paul so happy like that. After that, I started seeing him and asked him out to dinner. Then I confessed my feelings for him and we started to go out. He had already cancelled his lease and was moving from one friend's house to another, so I invited him to my house to live with me. He was a very good cook and did perfect housework, allowing me to concentrate on my work to the best of my ability. Apparently, the fact that he was able to move from one friend's house to another was rather useful because he was doing housework at a housekeeper's level. He was really easy to live with because he usually had a laid-back personality that really helped me relax as well. I didn't want to let him go, so I proposed to him, which I never thought I would do. He was surprised, but when I told him how I felt, he accepted my proposal. We got married and had a happy family. There was one problem, and that was my husband's parents, Lily and Jason. Both of them didn't bully me or anything, but they were surprisingly greedy. Hey, Sasha, I want this brand bag. I want this motorcycle. What? But I don't know what to say. Huh? Because you work for a major international company. Of course, you'd gift your parents these kind of things, right? No, no. Why should I even gift you these things? We're the parents. It's a child's duty to gift these things to the parents to show how grateful you are to us. No, I'm just your son's wife. You also become our child when you get married to our son. Don't be stingy, just buy them. But we gave you gifts for Mother's Day and Father's Day last time, didn't we? I don't care when or how many gifts you give. You can give gifts anytime you want, right? No, my savings are decreasing too, so... It will be fine, so I'll show you earn enough money anyway. There were many times when Lily and Jason persistently made requests like this, and I ended up buying them their gifts. I was indeed troubled, but I also wanted to get along with them because they were my husband's parents. 
so I couldn't really talk to my husband about it. Then one day, my parents-in-law did something outrageous. Sasha, I want to show you something today. Huh? What is it? That's something you'll have to wait and see. With that, my in-laws took me somewhere in their car. My husband had just gone out with his friends. I was anxious to see where they were taking me. Then we stopped in front of a house in an upscale residential area. Um, where is this? <laughs> Are you surprised? This is our new house where Jason and I will live from now on. What? I was surprised. To be honest, it is a very luxurious house that doesn't really suit my parents-in-law. I didn't think Jason and Lily would be able to afford the rent with the money they earn. Wow, you two made a bold purchase, didn't you? Yes, it was. But I'd be so happy to spend my retirement in such a nice house like this. I can brag about it to all my friends. Well, my in-laws are free to define their own happiness however they want, so I can't really say anything about it. They have always come to visit us at our apartment, so if they buy a new house for themselves, they may have less chance to come here. That might be a good thing. Then I'd have more time with my own husband. I'm happy for you two. I'm glad you two are going to enjoy your life here. Yeah, we're really happy. Well then, Sasha, let's get down to business. I'll be counting on you to pay the mortgage. Excuse me? What on earth are you talking about? Because you're paid well, right? Then you can at least pay us the mortgage, right? No, no, no. What are you talking about? There is no way I would pay such a thing. Why not? If you thought of us, you would pay it, don't you? No, this doesn't make any sense at all. How much is the loan, anyway? It's a 15-year loan. $2,000 per month. What? That's even more impossible. This is just unacceptable. Wait a minute! We'll be in trouble if you don't pay up. There's no way we can afford it. I'm sorry, but that's impossible. Please, give up. Saying that, I ran and left, got a taxi and went home. What in the world were my in-laws thinking about? They were being outrageous, asking me to pay their mortgage like that. I managed to escape at that time, but my in-laws were very persistent. They kept calling me, sending me messages after messages, and even barging into my office. Hey, Sasha, just pay the mortgage as soon as possible. All you have to do is wire me the 2000 Even though I refused every single time, my parents-in-law never gave up. They even came to my parents' house and asked me to convince their daughter. They were so insistent that I almost became neurotic. Then my husband seemed to notice that I was having a hard time. What's wrong? Oh, um... If something's bothering you, you should talk about it to me. Okay. I must have had enough. I told my husband everything. I was crying as I talked. I see. I had no idea my mom and dad did that. I'm sorry. I know they're your parents and I wanted to get close with them, but... No, I'm the one who's sorry. I didn't realize that at all. I can't believe I put you through that much trouble. Okay, I'll take care of it then. Huh? Then my husband started making a phone call to somewhere, and he was moving around in a hurry. I was really surprised to find out about the plan my husband had made. I didn't know he was that kind of person. And in no time at all, things were going according to my husband's plan. Incidentally, my in-laws were visiting the company where I worked once again to make me pay their mortgage. Please, let us talk to Sasha. Um, is this for a business meeting or something? We're her in-laws. We need to talk to her about something very personal. Please, contact her immediately. Uh, I'm sorry, but we don't have anyone by the name of Sasha in our company. What? Did she quit the company by any chance? I can't tell you those details because it's personal information. L let's call Sasha right now. Oh no, she's not answering. What the? What about Paul? I can't get connected to him. Oh no. The receptionist at the office told me later that she had talked to my in-laws like that. Jason and Lily were also surprised that other people were living in the house where my husband and I were living, and they came over to my parents' house to ask what was going on. My parents sent them away, saying that they would not tell them where I was, 
and that they would call the police if they stayed there any longer. Then there were many messages from my in-laws to me, but we continued to ignore them all. Then a year passed. Should I contact them now? With that, my husband replied to my in-laws. Are you two okay? Then the message was immediately read, and we got a phone call from them. But paul where are you right now? We're in a serious situation here. You guys bought the house all on your own, didn't you? I mean, I won't forgive you for trying to make Sasha pay for your mortgage. I, I'm sorry about that, but I'll make it last this time, so please help us out. What's the situation now? Oh, after all that, we ended up giving up the house, but the value of the house dropped as soon as we bought it, and we're in about $200,000 debt. We've been borrowing from other consumer lenders to pay the debt. Well, I'm at the point where I can't borrow any more money, though. So please, kiss Sasha here as soon as possible. I mean, you guys don't even have to see us. Just please transfer the money. That's enough. I'm not going to let Sasha get involved with you two anymore. I'm not going to get involved either. I only called you today to tell you that I'm cutting ties with you two. Oh, no. Wait a minute. If you abandon us, we'll... Then, you two should repent for what you both have done. But it's already too late. See you later. With that, my husband hung up the phone and erased and blocked all of his parents' contact information. I don't know what happened to my parents-in-law, but they probably became unable to repay their debts and disappeared into the darkness. By the way, my husband and I are currently living abroad to escape from my parents-in-law's. My husband had a close friend living overseas when he was a backpacker, and he contacted his friend and asked him to arrange housing and such. I then left my job and followed my husband. The great thing about my husband was that he also had another friend there who was an excellent manager, and he introduced me to him. He interviewed me remotely, and I was hired right away to the company where he works at. That allowed us to live abroad for a salary not that much different from what I made previously, and now... We get to live in a pretty nice house. Furthermore, my husband was selling his paintings on the streets there as well, and he was able to get them placed in a local museum, which allowed him to bring in quite a bit of income from his paintings. He now earns as much as I do, and we are quite well off. And now I have given birth to a child, and our family of three is living happily. It's crazy that Jason and Lily were even trying to collect their mortgage from Sasha. They both deserve what they got. By the way, Sasha's husband is an amazing guy. It sounds like Sasha would never get tired of spending every day with a guy like him. I wish Sasha a happy life with her family in the future. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.